All right, last time I dug into my inspiration to figure out what I actually need to be painting for the next few weeks. And today I'm gonna to go ahead and apply that to finding reference. And we're gonna be talking all about what kind of reference you need, what makes the cut, and you're gonna get a close up in-depth look at how I actually choose reference for my paintings. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Chelsea. I am a full-time professional oil painter specializing in expressive portraiture, and I am embarking on a multi-month project to create a body of work that is consistent and not only that but it captures the style that i'm really interested in exploring so if you would like to follow along on this journey please go ahead and like and subscribe and if you really like this process and you feel like it resonates with you and you would like help working in the same way too or getting the same intentionality in your work i have a link to find out more about my mentorships down in the description as well as an application to see if we are a fit to work together. Okay, so last time I pulled up this Pinterest board and I scrolled through and I highlighted a few things that really stood out to me. Um, most notably, right off the bat, I made a decision early on that I really wanted to focus on the portraiture side of this board. So I have some really beautiful landscape paintings here and I'm just not at the point where I am ready to dive into landscape. And so I wanted to go ahead and make the decision that I'm going to be focusing on portraits for this portfolio of work that I'm assembling. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to that portion of the board so we can see a little bit more accurately what we need to be looking for. And right off the bat, one thing I'm noticing is that these are pretty traditional portrait setups by and large. Um, a lot of them are like head and shoulders vignettes. Um, they don't seem to be candid shots by and large. There are some exceptions to this, but all in all, I would say that if I were doing a photo shoot, for instance, I would probably be bringing a model into a set or my studio rather than like going with that model out into the world or going to an event and trying to capture a candid shot. Um, now, again, there's some dancer paintings that are exceptions to this on this board, but by and large, a lot of these pieces have been pretty traditionally staged. And so that's something I'm going to look for in my existing reference library when I sit down to paint. Now, the next thing that really stands out to me is the lighting is also pretty typical of a staged portrait photo shoot. So, you know, we often have light that is at like a three quarter angle to the model. We have light that produces a clear shadow pattern, but we don't often have light that is so intense that we like really blow out the features and we just see like really stark shadow shapes. You know, there are exceptions to this on the board, but by and large, I would say I want to be thinking about a pretty traditional lighting setup. So something where the model's face is entirely in shadow or an image where the model has no shadows on the face whatsoever probably aren't going to be super useful for me. Um, these probably aren't going to be images I want to choose. What do I mean when I talk about that? Over here, I'm going to go ahead and pull up an image that I was working on for a recent YouTube video. Now, this looks like a nice image. You know, it's, it's high resolution. The model's in an interesting pose. She has a f flattering facial expression. Everything we need is here, except if you've been paying attention to some of the characteristics that I've been mentioning, basically all of her is in shadow. It might not really read that way because her skin tone still reads pretty light despite the fact that she's in shadow. It's not like she's like a fully dark silhouette here, but it makes it very difficult for me to actually create the kinds of images I see on this board because the lighting just isn't a match. Similarly, if I go over here to my plan for another recent um, YouTube video that you might have seen on my channel, I have this image that has the model basically entirely in shadow, just with a little bit of rim lighting. I should have learned by now that this is a recipe for a very frustrating painting, um, so I need to keep this in mind when I'm choosing something today. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the reference for another one of my recent YouTube videos. This one was much more enjoyable to paint, um, and that is because this was a pretty traditionally set up portrait where we had a light that we were putting on the model, we were trying to find those shadow shapes, we really wanted to intentionally have this balance where the majority of the face is in the light, but we knew we would get shadows along the nose, especially the bottom of the nose, under the cheekbone, under the jaw, 
etc. Not only that, but that light is pretty hard, so we can see a fairly clear delineation of where the light ends and the shadow begins. So as I choose some reference for the next few paintings here, I want to keep this in mind. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dive into my own reference library. So I have a number of images here, mostly they're from Howard Lyons Gumroad. I will link this down in the description because this is a phenomenal resource. Howard is an artist himself and he just takes really, really great reference images and puts them together into very large reference packs that are very affordable. Um, if you are looking to do portraiture like this, rather than trying to find photographs off of Pinterest or you know, use like a subpar iPhone photo, I would go ahead and make this small but very meaningful investment in yourself and go ahead and get yourself some reference that's really gonna pay off. So kicking off, um, I have images that I've saved from several reference packs of his. Um, you can actually see the name in most of these. So if you're interested in getting them for yourself, you can pretty easily pick out which reference pack this would be from. You know, what's notable about these is that they are typically full body compositions. Um, if you're interested in figurative work or you are more of an illustrator, um, you know, getting these full body reference photos can be really helpful. That being said, um, I'm probably going to be cropping in to the head and shoulders view for most of these. Um, given what I have on my inspiration board, this just makes the most sense. So I'm not going to be considering most of the image. I'm probably not even going to really be considering the background, but I am really interested in visualizing what would this look like if I cropped this in so that I was pretty close to just the face or the head and shoulders. Right off the bat, I really like this particular composition. I like the arc of her neck. We have a pretty even split of light and shadow on the face, and I can really see that delineation clearly. Profile views tend to be tricky, even if you do have a very clear light source on the model. Oftentimes, the shadow shapes just don't appear when you're in that profile view. You will typically get a very small shadow that's a core shadow under the nose, you might get a touch of a cast shadow below that. Same thing below the lower lip. And typically, really, the only dominant shadow you see is the one under the jaw. Um, and you might get a hint of one under the cheekbone. It just tends to be a trickier view as far as a value structure is concerned. So while I think there are definite advantages to working in profile from a light and shadow perspective, which I'm really focusing on here, it's just not the ideal fit. Now here we have a view that I think matches a lot of what we see on the board. You know, there's a little bit of a tilt to the face, but she is more or less straight on. So three quarter view, we kind of have this three quarter lighting on the face as well. You know, I get that really clear shadow on the side and bottom of the nose, below the cheekbone, into the jaw, in the brows themselves. This would definitely be one that I will want to save. Now, this is a really interesting one because while I can see this area of her face that's catching the light, you know, overall, if I were to do a really quick no tan or like two value study of this whole pose, I would probably simplify everything from the collarbone up into shadow. Um, so this is another one that I would say is pretty tricky and I could easily kind of tempt myself into making a very frustrating painting if I chose this particular reference. And again, this is given what I have on my inspiration board here. This isn't a commentary on like objectively what is or is not a useful reference. Rather, I want this to really be a reflection of the kind of work that I'm interested in making. Now we go to some reference that I've taken. And what's interesting about these is that they are done outside and they do typically have this really, really strong shadowing on the face, very hard edges between the light and shadow. Typically the eye sockets are almost entirely in shadow. You might recognize a few of these as images that I've actually painted before on this YouTube channel. You know, here's another one where she is entirely in shadow with the exception of maybe that shoulder um, and a little bit of the hand here. So this might not be my first choice um, for this particular series, although I do really love um, all of these references. Now going back into some more Howard Lyon. 
I actually quite like this reference a lot. Um, it works very well from a full body perspective. There's like a very clear narrative action happening. Really interesting details with the costuming, with her hair. The expression on her face is really descriptive. That being said, it might not be ideal for this particular set of work, but I will probably keep an eye on this one and see if it might be ideal for a painting coming up. This one I think is really interesting. It has the feeling from a pretty like classical tradition in painting. Um, so I'm thinking about someone like Tina Figarelli, like Alex Venezia, basically like my whole crew of friends over at East Oaks. They do a really beautiful job of capturing very subtle changes in skin tone and like really capturing light as it passes through the skin. And there's something about this reference that just really makes me think of their work. Here I pulled up some of Alex's pieces and not only can we see a similarity in terms of like the nature of the pose, but I think also we can really see the focus on the skin tone in um, this reference compared to these pieces. And this is the kind of way that I really like to think when I look at reference. I wanna really ask myself, how does this reference want to be painted? And does that match what I'm actually setting out to do? We can see a very similar composition in one of Tina's paintings here. And I think there's also a very similar vibe in Caroline Nelson's work. Um, so if you'd like to check out any of their work or the work of any of the East Oaks crew, I will include links to those in the description. Now we come to a reference that I just painted in one of my most recent videos. I have several very similar poses from this one model. And what really stood out to me about this reference is that I felt that I could see a lot more color in her face. And I think the reason is that she is seated against a lighter backdrop. Um, typically being against something lighter or being outside allows a little bit more color to bounce into the model's skin. Whereas when you have them against a really dark gray backdrop, um, you're typically going to see a lot more of like pure local color. And for me, it's harder for me to see um, a lot of color variation in the skin tone, which is something that I do see come up in my board quite a bit. Obviously it's not to an extreme, but it is something worth paying attention to. And so this reference really stood out to me in general because I felt that I could really achieve the color that I'm interested in. So already these kinds of images are closer to my goal. Now, one thing that is a little bit tricky about some of these images is we do have a secondary light source on the model's face. So you can tell here we have the dominant light source coming over from the left. That's why the side of the face um, is in the light and we start to get shadowing as we move over um, onto the far side of the face. But then we have this very cold rim lighting that's happening here. And that's because there is another light. And typically, you know, what I see on my board here are references with a single light source. So this is something else to pay attention to. Having more than one light source can really change the feeling of the image. And a lot of paintings that might have been made in like John Singer Sargent's time, you really do have one light source. Oftentimes it's like a north facing window rather than, you know, a soft box that you bring into someone's home. So oftentimes having multiple light sources or even something like, you know, having a very warm secondary light source or a very cool, in this case, a blue secondary light source, it can really make the image feel a bit more modern. And that isn't really what I'm trying to do. So it's something I wanna keep in mind as I look at this particular set of references, especially as I'm trying to narrow this down to the last handful of paintings that I'm interested in. Now, this photograph really stands out to me while it is a little bit tricky because it is in profile and I'm gonna have less light and shadow information to work with. I really just like the overall shape that her hair is creating. So this could be a sister piece to the painting that I've already made of this particular model. I really like this reference. One thing that also um, stands out to me about this reference is its similarity to this particular Daniel Keyes painting. Something about the model with long, in her case, like dirty blonde hair, white dress, white backdrop. I can really see how these two images relate to one another. And this is something else that's really important about choosing reference. If you can really see a direct through line to a painting on your board, just like I saw that direct through line between 
between the earlier reference and the style of some of my East Oak studio friends um, and the way that they like to compose paintings. These are the references you really want to run with, especially when you see the through line to your particular inspiration. It's great when you see inspiration that is familiar to you or you like, but it's best when you see inspiration that really looks like pieces on your particular vision board for the kind of work you want to create. So those pieces automatically are gonna make it to my short list. Again, I really find this beautiful. That being said, she's actually in shadow with the exception of this very, very strong rim lighting, which is gonna make my job harder. But not only that, more importantly, it just doesn't match the lighting scenarios that I see on my inspiration board here. So this probably isn't going to make the short list. Some really great poses though. And if this happens to be the kind of image that you're drawn to or the kind of painting that you're drawn to, um, again, check out Howard's reference packs. They're fantastic. Now we kind of get back into that lighting scheme where we do have a really nice balance of light and shadow, but then we also have that really strong rim light. That's just not quite what I'm looking for. Um, so that's something I'll be keeping in mind. So we can compare these two images here. Very similar pose, very similar light and shadow, very similar anatomy. But in one, we have the secondary light source. And in the other, we don't. And I think you can see a little bit more clearly how this piece feels similar to some of the paintings that are on my inspiration board here. All right, and here are just some of the paintings that I saved that I want to consider for future work. Now, some of these are pieces that stood out to me and they aren't quite a fit for what I'm doing right now, but I wanted to consider them in some way or see if they might be a fit for something else. This is a great example of that. And we have several pieces that are very similar and I'm probably gonna have to choose between reference. And some pieces that might not be entirely ideal in terms of something like having this rim light, or it might be something where I build this into the composition in some way, or I can simply treat it as an experiment, but a couple of these pieces I thought were overall strong enough as reference and close enough to what I have on my board um, that I thought that it might be worth considering. And from here, I'm probably going to take a look through some other reference material that I have. I might consider any gaps in what I have when I look back at the board and put together another photo shoot. And I will probably take some of these pieces and go ahead and put them in Photoshop and do a little Photoshop test with them to really narrow down the compositions and decide which ones I'm wanting to paint. So I hope this walkthrough of how I choose reference has been helpful. If I had to really sum this up for all of you, I would say, you really want to make sure that you are using reference that has been intentionally chosen as reference for a painting. Things like quick iPhone candids, photos that you find on Pinterest, even images from like a royalty-free stock image website typically aren't ideal. We really want to take the extra effort and either work with other artists who have thoughtfully put together photo shoots and reference packs for other painters, um, or go ahead and stage those kinds of photo shoots ourselves so that we not only get the model that we're interested in, we are going to get the lighting, we're gonna get the pose, we're gonna get the expression, the costuming, the background um, that's really going to serve us in our particular image. So again, I will link Howard Lyon and his reference packs down in the description if you're interested in checking out more of his work. And if you have any questions about choosing reference, make sure to let me know in the comments so I can address it in the next video. Otherwise, until next time, happy painting.